What was that? Perfect. <laughs> Good Monday morning. I was waiting for the wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Don't worry. The, the wow will return. Wow. <laughs> it's Monday. Guys, good morning. Welcome to DC TV. It is Monday, December 5th. God, I can't believe it's December 5th. 2022. Damn. Looking at the futures right now, the S&P is down uh, 0.7% or 28 points. The Dow's down 223. NASDAQ is down 84. So a little bit of a red day, but oil is up. WTI crude's back up to 82.63. Surprise, surprise. It's up three and a third percent. Looking at uh, Bitcoin, and that is also up significantly uh, over the last week or so. It's actually made a pretty decent jump. Sitting at 17,238, 294. And Jaime, um, you know, What's going on with Bitcoin right now? <laughs> Glad you asked. So at this moment, the big question, to keep it really simple, is is this a dead cat bounce or uh, to, for a continuation? Or will we, uh, is there, did we hit the bottom? Have we hit the bottom overall? So it, it currently has a visible nice curve to it at the moment. The And we're on the three-day, on the three-day uh, chart where the next big obstacle uh, that we have to figure out, that the next ceiling that we have to get through to test then as support and then continue moving up is this uh, 17,200 level where we're at currently. We just closed on it. The big question is, will we continue moving up to the 19,300? Test it as a ceiling. So it ranges, and what we're looking at here. This is your three-day chart. Yes, on the three-day chart, we are, this is what we're looking at. The previous floor, which is this red line I just drew, is 18,300. This is where we had been bouncing for a while. So this is a nice ceiling we're rising towards. If we rise there and hold it as support, then there is a, a, high chance that we have seen the bottom and at that point we can make uh, trading decisions now the interesting chart at this moment is the weekly chart here's where you can clearly see that previous floor uh so if i zoom out you can see where we've been we broke that bottom fibonacci level and now we're coming to this line that i drew on the previous chart now which you see currently here, we just rose towards it and almost touched it. So by the end of this week, by this Sunday, we will see, is this, and if you look at the red candle we just saw, it is a pretty hefty drop. And after big red ones, you usually see what's called a bear flag. A bear flag is when the market continues rising slowly to then take another dump. Yeah. So we just uh, dumped here this seems to be a bear flag yeah uh, we won't know unless we recover that 19,000 area that we uh, were speaking of just earlier on the yeah the the the, the trend itself is still down yes. so it's still a downward trend it hasn't actually broken that downward trend at all exactly. so until it does we're just going to continue to assume that this is still bearish it, that's it and uh, usually there is a Christmas rally in the traditional markets yeah. in December. So this may be part of that. We have that hearing coming in with SBF on the 13th. Yes. So there's a few events that are occurring uh, in the uh, financial world that may impact this. Either reverses it or we take the next bloody and final bloody leg down yeah. uh, for next year. The only one that's looking really sexy at this moment th during this whole time period is that uh, trust wallet token. It closed this Sunday, yesterday, last night above this FIB level. So take it as you may, this is a wallet uh, where the biggest recommendation is take, take ownership of your own assets by putting in a cold wallet. A warm wallet is another option. So it's just interesting to see that this one continues to remain bullish yeah uh in that sense and that's it any questions no all good all no. right guys so Th it's 
Thank you for the update, Jaime, right. as always. Uh, so, guys, uh, we have a ton of uh, news to talk about today. Obviously, as you saw the title, one of them is the, the Twitter files, which our very own, the Real Data Lord, uh, put up and, and went into Impromptu live stream. A shout out to Brandon for doing that. We're going to cover some of the highlights there and maybe uh, give a little bit more of it abbreviated a version from from Brandon on what exactly transpired there we'll be sharing that as well as will SBF actually show up to this to the congressional hearing and testify in front of uh, of Congress um, Maxine Waters actually tweeted him directly and he responded so we'll see what we'll, we're going to talk about that a little bit also Apple and China uh is been an interesting topic that we're going to get get into even more we're going to it is relatable to cryptocurrencies guys uh and and how all that's going to transpire because we just kind of touched on that on Friday about uh, what they're doing with Coinbase too. And it seems as if Tim Cook is uh, backpedaling a bit on that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as well. And the Winklevoss twins might be in trouble. Uh, they own, they owe clients almost a billion dollars. So we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, but guys, how you doing? How you doing, Tamp? Doing good, man. Doing good. <laughs> I, know, I, I, like, I'm trying went, to... I just went hard. I just went hard. We just went hard for like 11 minutes in Tampa, which is like just chilling there. So I just want to yeah, make sure I acknowledge that you're still here. I'm uh, I, I'm going to try to not get upset with the SBF thing. Oh, Again, no, you definitely should. Zero yeah, yeah. exposure <laughs> to FTX. I, I, am, I don't have a dog in this fight except for my opinion, which can be heavy at times. I've except for told. your community got kicked <laughs> oh, in the dick. So. Wow. Yeah. 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 Boy. And, and the fact that until it's over, legislation may get fuck this industry because of SPF. That's yeah, my that's concern. Right. That's we'll my we'll talk a little, little about, about him right. and Caroline today. Yeah. Both, both those Harry Potter looking characters. <laughs> 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 they're like, like Dobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say they're like worse. Maybe like Lord of the Rings characters. Yeah. He's yeah. he's more like a hobbit. He's like, yeah. he's like a B-roll hobbit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Big roll, well, usually like the an extra hobbit. Yeah, the stunt hobbit, the extra. <laughs> the He's stunt. gonna take the role <laughs> for Miss Harry Potter. Jesus Christ. Yeah, uh, that's that's been. I mean, and he's been hopping all over uh, Twitter Spaces as well, and just getting absolutely ripped. Uh, he's been making this media tour for yeah. I, for reasons that I still don't really understand why. No, it's We're all gonna, part of the strategy. Yeah, Bernie well, Madoff's lawyer told him to shut up. He's like, "Stop talking! <laughs> stop it! Stop talking!" Yeah. 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 It's all like, part of the strategy, guys. We'll get into it. He's a fall yes. guy, I think. Yeah, but the way even Maxine and push him under the bus. Over, push him, it's push it's him. almost Tam's strategy is the true strategy. Is okay. Maxine, instead of saying, Hey, you have to be accountable to American people, we uh right. we cite you to come to no, it's like, hey, thanks for trying. I know you're trying all to do over the Twitter. Best you can. <laughs> this is this yeah. is this is how we really yeah. instill yeah. fear into the minds of criminals. Yeah. Is we right. politely ask them to show up in front of the effing government over Twitter. Can, uh, okay. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. We're, we're gonna get into that. We could get we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get into it. <laughs> Tam tries to drop it. We just <laughs> pull it back in. <laughs> you guys just put orders in. I know. Watch the machine go. That's Give right. it a little gas, and she gone. That's right. She gone. <laughs> Let her eat. <laughs> yep. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. So, you know that uh, most most days I end up coming up with some weird ass what the fuck news of the day. But I figured uh, there couldn't be too many things that were more WTF than uh, Elon Musk dropping the Twitter files, uh, which is the, the, the topic of today's uh, stream. And it is it was very interesting, Brandon. Uh, as our yeah. very own uh, at, at the real data lord, go follow him on Twitter and all the other socials. Uh, but uh, he uh, ended up going live on Friday night. I wasn't able to make it. No, none of us were. But he, and so he he manned the ship by himself. Codebug was here. Well Fuck done, sir. That's Codebug. Crushed me. it. Uh, and talked about what what was actually released. So if you guys didn't catch the the news on this, Elon Musk actually ended up uh, releasing these files that apparently. Uh, were just uh, Twitter higher ups going back and forth, and and it seemed as if, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon, but it seemed as if uh, this was actually under the nose of uh, Jack Dorsey, was it not? 
Yeah, yeah, this was v- Vijaya Gotti and Down. Um, and she's the one who went on uh, Joe Rogan Experience, and um, that's where Tim Pool made right. his big break. Um, his, you know, Joe, Joe was like, hey, this guy's going to ask real questions, and so he brought Tim Pool on, and Tim Pool didn't let him off the mat. They had no idea uh, he would just keep asking them, you know, substantial questions and like, hey, like – questions about section 230 for example like hey you're a publisher and a editor which is it you know <laughs> right yeah and so like, like these these are things that affect the entire social media landscape it certainly affects the centralization of information um it certainly affects um you know web3 and and people owning their own data because this is getting into the government trying to prevent you from doing so so there's a lot of uh, way to be had here, but yeah, Jack Dorsey as the CEO of the company was not privy to most of this until it was already a big, hot, stinky mess, um, and he had to just figure out how to clean it up. And, and said and it mess took a while. Just so everybody's on the same page. We're talking about Elon dropping the Twitter files regarding Hunter Biden and his laptop. Is that correct? Just yeah, yeah, we're and, all and, on the same and, page. And the, the story has very little to do with like Joe Biden, Hunter Biden specifically, it has more to do with the principle of how data was plainly uh, a reality and was just suppressed by Correct. by the media. So I, I want everyone to hear this. This is not about uh, bipartisan politics. That, Correct. that just happened to be the skin that was on top of this. If this was about, you know, Donald Trump and some funny thing there too, we'd be talking about it just the same, you know, so like, the, the the principle here is uh, Matt Taibbi is, is reporting on this this whole deal. Um, yeah, who is Matt Taibbi? Matt Taibbi is an independent uh, journalist. Okay. And um, yeah, uh, Tim Pool uses him quite a bit as a reference because he always has um, content that kind of breaks the the normal narrative. Um, and, and he's giving like really good cited information. If you read through Matt Taibbi's um, Twitter in, in the long run, you'll see like this dude really has his hand in the cookie jar he's he's getting you very substantial stories it's not just fluff yeah mm-hmm. so so but yeah the questions yeah. Go ahead. uh e- elon um was like you know i think in order to repair people's mistrust i have to show transparency and we, we believe in in transparency as a principle so this is really resonating here the like You just have to show what's under the hood and make sure that this applies to anything Elon does too. That's the key here. You know, a lot of people have like saviorism when it comes to to Elon. They think, well, Elon's, you know, above the, um, how should I say this? Elon's not going to make any of the same mistakes. And I hope he certainly doesn't. Um, But it it would be uh, two-faced to say, hey, all my predecessors did all this crap and then to not be transparent about his own thing. So I'm really hoping to see transparency from him on that. But um, I, I do want to reserve that for everyone. Don't um, think Elon's above making mistakes um, and doing things that are self-interested as well. Sure. But, um, but yeah, go ahead. No, I was just I was just agreeing with you. I, I will say sure. that like when <laughs> – not that Elon shouldn't have uh, – suspended kanye again but uh i believe the final straw was when kanye shared a fat elon picture and that was like <laughs> well that was no. that wasn't what happened that was just yeah. how, he, how he dipped out the the issue was it, it broke the the hate it did him. it did he literally but, was posting nazi but it, multiple it, times he posted a picture of a swastika I'm, intertwined inside i'm, the star I'm not David. listen to me i'm not saying that's not <laughs> yeah. why he didn't do it but he before he actually got suspended is when he shared that that picture of him on a boat. Yeah, he so so. My, my opinion on the whole Kanye thing is he's just trying to get a rise out of everyone to make yes. himself as relevant as possible. And That's exactly. I also what think he's very hurt from just his divorce and his family. He's mentally ill. Rex, and so I I think he's just uh, self destructing because because yeah. at least it's stimulating. But um, you know, regarding this this Elon stuff, um, let's get back to that. The, the the story shows that there is a lot of money changing hands from politicians um, and big tech, and um, big tech is giving politicians money to do them some favors, and then later politicians are asking big tech to do them some favors. So the circle jerk goes all around. Is the 
you know, problem. And so, you know, we uh, see over and over again, they, they were scrambling just to try to find some juicy angle to take on to, to make this story go away while elections were, were in process. Right. And, and most people after the fact who, were asked about the Hunter Biden laptop stuff, said that they probably would have voted differently if they would have known that prior to. And so this really is, you know, big tech interfering in in election integrity, and that's an issue. The um, other problem we ran into is uh, big tech was scrambling to try to find a policy that they could shut this whole, you know, big picture down. So what they found was... Um, they'd put this under hacked materials saying, oh, well, we don't know if the laptop was a hacked material. If it's a hacked material, we're not going to contribute to exfiltration and, you know, disseminating that information. And and that was just like an angle they were scrambling to find that we have, we have several sections um, in this whole story where they were basically like, I don't know. We just got to find something we can stick this to. Right. It it wasn't, it was, it was disingenuous and that's really the problem. Um, Yeah. if If it truly was a matter of, hacked materials. I mean, I, I can tell you, if, I, I wouldn't want, you know, uh, a company I'm working for having materials get hacked and then that being distributed. Right. So, um, that that's certainly a cybersecurity issue, but that's not what was happening here. It was, uh, New York times reporting on something and Twitter completely snuffing out that, that New York times story and and twitter had no accountability whatsoever to have to do that none at all and there was nothing in that um article that wasn't legal if it was illegal that would be between you know the state and new york times or that would be between you know the the party in question and new york times so twitter is just overstepping boundaries for political motive So just like to be clear on this, because a lot of people, you know, Elon seemingly built up this dropping of the Twitter files as we're going to really learn something about the Hunter Biden laptop and assumed what was on that laptop. So because of that, and I was even expecting that. So nothing, nothing came out showing, hey, here's what was on the laptop. Bow, you know, like here it is. A lot of people thought that this Twitter files dump was a dud that it really was was a big nothing burger. Yeah. And I think the bigger story that that Brandon is explaining is simply that Twitter absolutely suppressed things that were pivotal during mm-hmm. an immediate election period. Um things like you said that that may or may not have swayed votes. I mean 17% of people said they might not have voted for Biden if they knew all this, but that's also with 2 years plus of a shit economy and everything right. else that this party yeah, has done. Sort of so course, yeah. that's that, you know, I, I I don't know if that's completely right, but just elections in general are complete smear campaigns. That's what they are. Like, yeah. it's it's strange to me every time I see any commercial. And I mean, Ford does it, too. Ford will spend half of their commercial talking about Chevy. And when I'm done watching the commercial, I'm like, whose commercial was that? And politicians yeah. are the worst at it. They'll they'll talk about another politician the entire time. And at the very end, we'll be like, this message is endorsed by somebody totally freaking different. And I'm like, what did I just watch? Right. Yeah. So it's weird that Twitter suppressed smear on only one side and smear that let's talk about. I mean, it was really bad. It, it's I mean, it talks about insider trading, uh, you know, payoffs under the table deals. Who I mean, we, we've seen crack pipes and whores and everything else, you know, from the supposed laptop. So the whole thing is, is how do you suppress certain smear that is really really bad but not others and that's why this is not a huge nothing burger it's it's not mm-hmm. that it was something on the laptop that everybody should have seen and didn't but it gives a very bad precedent on what may come at down where 100 percent. you know uh if legislation comes to this how much of the truth was um hidden from public view or how much of the facts, let's say, uh, is hidden from public view for a balanced decision to come out of this. Mm -hmm. And you see that continuation of money, politics, and global situations continue to occur with the Ukraine situation, you know, which has a historicity with this situation here. 
because Hunter Biden was involved with uh, Ukraine, Ukraine way back then right. at that time. So, right. yeah, it, it's just how do and that's why I do respect the fact that they do do release this because at least you can see the mo how it was done and how yeah. it was suppressed uh, and why uh, not all the facts were able to be brought out uh, for public discourse. Well, uh, I think it was, and if if you're if you're, if you're looking at this with a, with an open mind, right? Like, mm -hmm. and you're, you're, you're looking at this and saying, okay, there, there's serious issues here, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican and, and, and or libertarian um, Brandon led with this. It's like, this isn't a, bi this isn't a, a partisan issue. This is, this is a this political, is, it's, it's not, not, not just that, just like, it's an American issue. Yeah. Like it, this is about this, constitutional rights. Yeah. This is a powerful company that has, made efforts to try to influence elections. And that, that's really what it comes down to. There was, there was clear bias. Um, there was uh, suspensions and suppressions of um, someone, you know, uh, we saw, um, uh, shoot, Kelly Mc, um, um, McEnany. Mc, Mc, yeah, uh, was suppressed. And she, listen, now, no matter what, what your opinion is of her, she didn't really do anything uh, on Twitter to, to constitute a suspension. And so, um, you know, that, it's that's Kaylee me. McEnany. Kaylee. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and so I, uh, I don't know. I, I, it, there's, there's definitely issues here while there could have, some of the, uh, expectations kind of felt like it was a dud. There, there is still a much larger issue. And all it did was just confirm a lot of people's suspicions about what, what was going on. And if, if this is happening with Twitter, you know, it's happening with yes. all the other ones. And, and Mark Zuckerberg yeah. actually admitted that from the FBI. Uh, on that on a Joe Rogan podcast earlier um, this fall, when when George Washington was walking the earth, this would have been a death penalty type thing. And I'm not I'm not suggesting that we have to go that far. I am suggesting there's consequences. There needs to be consequences at some level. Like like the the, the fact that people are are meddling with the fabric of you know America's perceived integrity. That, that's quite an issue um and, and this 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 whole issue is solved with web3 it really is it's truly solved with web3 that's why we're talking about this here yeah um the yeah. uh <clears throat> one thing i did want to bring up because it's got my my blood boiling um if you look at um pull up the twitter files again and go to 36 right at the end um so <clears throat> the the statement is uh the First Amendment isn't absolute. Zabo's letter containing a chilling passage relaying Democratic lawmakers' attitudes, they want more moderation, and as for the Bill of Rights, it's not absolute. So uh, the Democrats, meanwhile, complained that companies are inept. They left the conservatives muddy the water, or they let the conservatives muddy the water and make the Biden campaign look corrupt, even though Biden is innocent. That, that's the angle they were taking. Um, they linked this to the Hillary Clinton email scandal and she did nothing wrong because the press wouldn't let the story go. Oh, that's exactly what happened when we looked into the details, isn't it? Um, it became a scandal far out of proportion. I don't think so at all. Uh, in their mind, social media is doing the same thing. It isn't moderating or I'm sorry, it, it doesn't refresh. Okay. My eyes get blurry. It doesn't moderate enough harmful content. So when it does, like it did yesterday, it becomes a story. If the companies moderate more, conservatives wouldn't even think to use social media for disinformation, misinformation, and otherwise. Uh, I hope you see how sideways this entire statement is. They're just they're just trying to paint everything with an enormous slant. And the Democrats were in agreement. Social media needs to moderate more because they're corrupting democracy and making all truth relative when pushed on how the government might insist on that consistent with the first amendment they demurred the first amendment isn't absolute so like that entire statement is completely sideways um uh, they have this idea that big daddy government needs to tell you what's good for you because you don't know what's good for you and you can't be responsible for uh what you choose to put on uh in the morning and what you choose to eat for breakfast and what you choose to eat for lunch we know you're an adult but you're still daddy's little girl it's it's it, it's that entire approach um, is, is what's so concerning. 
I think the bottom line, it, it, the code bug is dead on, is about equal treatment under the law or under yep. company policies. Yep. That transparency, and it, we keep coming back to the word transparency, it's that's the problem when these big techs and these organizations and politicians, when they start meddling with facts, they, everything should be fully transparent so we can have, as an American uh, community and society, a fully fact-based where we can come to a conclusion instead of, I'm wondering what they're hiding. I wonder what this guy's hiding. And now no one's speaking clearly. No one's speaking uh, transparently. It's right because we can't do treat everything equally and Elon exposing this is proof of that. I, I guess my, my big question is Brandon, you, you, you had mm -hmm. talked about, uh, you just mentioned about how it relates to web three. So how does the Twitter files yeah. itself and Elon releasing these, how does web web three solve these issues? Yeah. So, so the, this whole issue happens. Um, this is a drinking game. I, I think we can start playing every time Brandon says centralized systems, but uh, <laughs> really that this is an issue where centralized systems are the root cause here. We have um, centralization of power. So a few people say, Hey, we're going to do this thing and they can just do it. They're not checked. There's no self custody of information. Um, it's just, they can they change say, the database. Happen. Like it happened with like eliminate certain facts from it. Yeah. That's what centralization allows. Right. Yeah. And so uh, the idea is, uh, as we move into Web3 systems, uh, I hold my data, Tamp has her data, Jaime has his data, and if Brad were to make a social media site, all he'd be doing is allowing lookups to all of our hosted data. He couldn't take us down where we're hosted. He could say, eh, maybe that's not good for my site because... Um, Brandon says some pretty weird stuff and that's not my type of humor. And so, um, he could remove me from his list, but my, my content's still there. Anyone else can just basically fork his code and have that, uh, list included on their site and it's, it's present, right? So, um, th this completely pertains to decentralization, right? We have, th th this highlights the reality of why we need to, be working day in and day out to build these systems and to adopt these systems and help people understand these systems so that we can get out from underneath this this thumb because tech developed so quickly and people were like okay well i mean i have a device that can do this now so i guess it's a convenient way for me to talk to people and they did it out of convenience right it started with like zenga and then myspace and then facebook and then we had some other social medias like you know, Twitter pop up and people really started using them. And now that they're very video focused, like on, you know, Instagram and TikTok. So, and, and YouTube shorts. So I, I think no matter what, we need to be focusing on how we can get everyone we know into a place where they kind of own their information. They own their money. They own uh, certificates of authenticity so people can't spoof them. And right. this whole push to DeFi this whole push to Web3 is about getting middlemen out of the picture because they can exert force over you. And, and we don't have to have that system. We have the technology and tools now to build better systems. And if we're not doing that, we're going to be severely harming our kids in, in, in their entire generation, right? right. They're going to live in a world where, uh, you know, Big Brother really is watching them and Big Brother is really telling them what they can and can't say. And, and you know, I, I think I speak for everyone uh, when I say this, like we want our kids to be freer than we are. Mm -hmm. We want our kids to, to become more than we are. We want our kids to have uh, a, a, a world, you know, the, the whole idea of um, we plant trees beneath which shade we will not sit under. We want our kids to sit under the shade of the trees we're planting, though. And so that, that that's why this is a, a whole big push. That's what DCTV even exists for, right? Right. Yeah. And I, I just want to, like, break it down very quickly for audiences that maybe don't understand Web 3. And what is Web 1 and 2? You know, like, how are we at Web 3? I don't even know what's going on. And <laughs> the easiest way to break it down is Web 1, if you remember when the Internet first came out, it was just, let's, let's make up a business. Let, plumber. Smith's Plumbing. Smith's Plumbing wanted to play an early internet web one. All you saw was their website. That's all you could do. You go to like smithsplumbing.com, 
and there was information about Smith's Plumbing, including their location. You can call them, and that was it. All you could do was look at it. There was Business nothing part. more you can do. That was Web 1, and we all remember being there. Web 2 turned a little more interactive. And again, this is, this is very generalized, but Web 2 was more interactive. Now you go to Smith's Plumbing page. Not only can you see everything about their page, which you could in Web 1, but now you can interact. Interact. You could schedule an appointment. You could talk to somebody online. You could pay your bill. You could do whatever you need to do on a more interactive. It wasn't as one-sided. Now it's you and me interacting over the internet. That's web two. And we're still there right now. Yeah. You can Social order media. your groceries. Mm -hmm. Right. Social media, I can talk to you and whoever. <laughs> I can order my groceries online and schedule a pickup. That is web two, a little more 50-50 in the interaction phase. Web three is gonna go beyond that in terms of, like Brandon said, ownership of what you are and it the ability for that ownership to be authenticated. So mm -hmm. nobody else can manipulate true ownership. And this yeah. is where the evolution of NFTs is going to be so massive and so real world use case mm -hmm. is because NFTs are literally non fungible tokens, you will own everything online, your digital footprint in a way that cannot be taken away. So mm -hmm. if I am a, in this case, what we just talked about, if I am a journalist and I am going to own a story, whether it's with hack data, legit data, or face, um, you know, fake data, I am going to have to prove that I not only own my words, but that everything I'm reporting on is also authenticated as well. And, and if, if something doesn't match up, there'll be a massive red flag. So if I want to do false journalism, then if branding comes to my site and there's something false on it, you will be able to see that this is not authenticated data. Mm -hmm. And I will be able to be paid on my own. I will be able to pay out on my own. But it's true ownership of the web, not just us doing something on something somebody else owns. That is Web3 mm -hmm. and beyond. So a little simplistic, but overall a general idea of it. Yeah. But in practice, here's an example. So me, the journalist, I just posted it. I just released it. I've just validated it. Now, no one can go to the internet, let's say Twitter or New York Times and say, this article is no good. Boom, squelched it. And it's mm -hmm. gone. Uh, and you'll see that in Twitter nowadays, the manual process is people take snapshots of a post once it's censored or eliminated, now they're like, guys, this was here before uh, right. for your pleasure in viewing until they pull it out again. So Web3 actually, uh, that's what Tamp was referring to is that ownership and that uncensorable capability is part of that Web3. That's the yeah. difference right. between today and tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. And it's coming. It, and that's why we talk about crypto because cryptocurrency, digital currency in general is going to mm -hmm. be used as a foundational cornerstone of web three nfts will be a foundational cornerstone of web three it just will be and then you're going to have all these developers that use an sdk or a software development kit that build from basically the same pot of tools in order to make this happen that's why there's so much being pushed right now with certain engineers that code in certain known languages that we all need to do the same thing, have the same sort of monetary internet money, you know, magical internet money that needs to be understood because it's coming. That That's why we bring all this stuff up is it's hard to explain when we're not even there yet. But if you read the writing on the wall, we're trying to paint a picture that we can understand in today's terms for something that's not even here yet. Again, mm -hmm. we always go back to it's trying to explain email before email. It's trying to explain the internet before the internet. It's it's hard to explain, but conceptualize this because it's on the way. Yeah, and, and and look at the architecture too. There's what's called hub and spoke, where you have like a server in the middle, and then you have a bunch of clients all over the middle of the hub. And the clients are like, "Hey, can I see this web page?" And the server's like, "Yeah, here's the web page." And so we're we're actually moving away from that uh, architecture into what's called mesh architecture, where uh, I might be the first of, you know, the self-hosted nodes to say this is my data, but there's going to be systems that are going to help me get copies of that data that are distributed all over the place. So even if my record disappears, it can be uh, reassembled from a bunch of other people's um, fractional hosts. So right. um, that's where we need to go. That's on, that whole idea was honestly brought up by like 
peer to peer sharing, BitTorrent, you know, yes. uh, a lot of the, the, the uTorrent pirate based stuff kind of introduced that as a reality. People could really see the use case of like, oh, I can get movies this way. I can get music this mm -hmm. way. I can get, um, you know, uh, whatever your vice was this I, week. I, I can right. get adobe premiere that'll give mm -hmm. me viruses it's so awesome yeah um, yeah, yeah. But, trojan but, horses for the win but now the point is decentralization is very difficult to censor because uh, before you do a transaction the decentralized application the one that is querying or asking for the information has this global database that will confirm, ah, the consensus is this. So this is the truth. So someone censoring you in a decentralized world to web three is to hack it is mathematically almost impossible at this moment, just because of quantum. the mechanism. Yes. Yeah. But even in quantum, uh, Brandon, one of my arguments is, okay, Expensive. they're like one, but two, what prevents now, the blockchain from adopting quantum so now you're applying quantum and if quantum is the hacking mechanism well you just leveled up so will quantum be enough yeah to hack it, you know I so mean, with, with the current iteration i have logistic uh answers to that but yeah i mean who knows what it's going to look like i mean if, if you go back to like when ibm first started up a computer was a room it was literally a whole room of, of yeah paper sheets running on rollers and sometimes moths would try to eat the paper and uh they change the code up some of the hackers. holes that are punched in it and that's where <laughs> bug in the code came from like so like like if we think of computers that way and they're you know like it's, it's literally a phone in my hand now you know as opposed to um today we have quantum which is a big room at some point who knows maybe it could be um mm -hmm. you know different form factor but that technology that they say will hack is actually going to be used to be, continue being unhackable, if, if it makes sense. So in other words... It's an arms race. For yes, literally. Proof of literally. work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All good stuff. Uh, I actually like the direction that we took that in as far as Web3 and giving the explanation. So I certainly appreciate uh, that breakdown, Tamp. Absolutely uh, good stuff. So uh, moving on, guys. I wanted to, to talk a, just very briefly about SBF and Maxine Waters. So Maxine Waters uh, ended up tweeting out to SBF. Oops, not that one. <laughs> Maxine Waters ended up tweeting out to SBF uh, that we appreciate you've been candid in your discussions about what happened. Okay, whatever. Uh, your willingness <laughs> to talk to the public will help the company's customers, investors, and others. To that end, we, wish, we would welcome your participation in our hearing on the 13th. Then SBF did reply. I thought he did reply. Um, oh, he did. I'll have to find it. But he basically said... Uh, yeah, I'm I still might, learning. Yeah, what I might happened? show up. I might show up. I might not. Um, and so I guess I should just, just take bets as to whether or not he's going to. If you're going to say um and ah 14 times yeah. in between each word. No, yeah. yeah, he said he said he would be happy to show up when he was done learning what all took place at FTX mm. and Alameda. And then once he had a good grasp on it, he believes it his duty to then speak and testify. Oh, that's good of him. Bitch, what more do you have to learn? I think yeah, what you, he want. needs to learn is what salad dressings go good with this type of tofu. Yeah, exactly. This you know, soy boy energy. Yeah. Like this, and this is the thing. Here's a guy that a few months ago, before all this, was the smartest person in the room. And was the cocky, other arrogant yeah. son right. of a bitch telling everybody else what to do, pointing out to other people like CZ and Jaime always says, "Ha ha, I'm here. You're not. You're not in the U.S. You don't matter." He's on the cover of Forbes. He's on the cover of every magazine you could think about. He is the smartest person in all of cryptocurrency a few months ago. And now that everything's imploded, now it's, uh, oh, uh, uh, um, well, um, uh, uh, I don't know, yeah. Portnoy. Hi, guys. Hi. What yeah. happened? Sorry. Now all of a sudden, yeah, he, he's just this innocent little kid. Cutesy who just little didn't boy know. Bull crap. I got in over my head. Right. Mm -hmm. He's painting this picture right now, and I will maintain this. He is painting this picture so that he can go down the path of a failure to oversee in the court of law versus fraud charges in the court of law. Because mm -hmm. if you are in his shoes all day long, you want, hey, uh, fail to oversight. I was in over my head. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I was on my high horse and I got smacked down, uh, humbled down. I learned my lesson. I'm sorry. Fail to oversight. That doesn't come with jail. That comes with a fine. 
and maybe your ability to never uh, handle somebody else's money again. Right. That's what that comes with. So that's what he's trying to do now versus the baby or uh, Bernie Madoff narrative of oh you God. are straight running fraud. That comes with a big spanking. That right there comes with jail time, prison time, and a lot more after that. But what he's doing right now is painting the picture so that he can maybe see the light of day for longer than it should be. Yes. The suit is a fraud. Yeah. Yes. And during during Madoff's time, the communication and tone was absolutely different to now the communication from the government, like Maxine, like it will help customers. No, actually, it's confusing customers at this moment. Right. Everything he's saying, like it's not helping. Yeah, and the smartest dude in the room is all of a sudden the dumbest dude in the room. Get yeah. out of here. And Coffeezilla peeled his eyelids out and was like, "Look at it. We'll talk yeah. about this." And and watch yeah. the 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 biggest the biggest bombshell is going to come from Caroline Ellison. You know, she um, what she she's now retained. What is it? Wil Wilker? What is it? Yeah, one of it's the like largest. W Wilmer Hale out of uh, Manhattan. They 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 defended the Clintons, of course. Um, but that aside, they're, they're really effing good They're I mean, they're mm -hmm. a boutique law firm, um, in Manhattan and she's retained them and she's been very quiet. She's been doing what her lawyers are telling her to do, uh, versus SBF who's going against not only his own lawyers, but the advice of anybody who's possibly been in anywhere near his shoes before. Yeah. Um, you know, Absolutely. and I think she's going to come in, she's going to cooperate and she is going to make it unequivocally clear that he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew the exact funds he was using, which are user funds, and he didn't care. I think yeah. this thing is going to go way back before anything else. Like this is this is way before Luna. This is way before Terra. Yeah. All this stuff is going to go way back to early 2021. Yeah, somebody's going to be the snitch, and Caroline isn't going to be the fall person. And she, uh, right. doesn't seem as if she's willing to be that that fall person for 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 a one Sam Bankman Freed. Uh, Kobug says uh, you can only run for so long. Uh, you'll eventually answer for all this by the by the end. And is, is there truth to that? Do we think that that's actually going to happen? There's a lot of people speculating that nothing's going to happen to Sam Bankman Freed. And you've actually said this, Tamp, that you know, yeah. he, might not, he might not go to jail at all. But well, um, whose bingo card was it on about all the Epstein stuff? No one's answered for that shit except right. for Epstein right. himself. You know, yeah. like we the have other hard evidence. I always say her name wrong. Was it Gislaine? Gislaine? What's her yeah, name? Gislaine. You know, you, I, I like well, to call her yeah. Gislaine because it's demeaning. Yeah, so. <laughs> she doesn't get anything. You know, there's all we we spent the first half of the show talking about all the political frauds and, and under right. the table deals it's that Gawain. go unpunished, no consequences yes. whatsoever. You have clearly something weird at Epstein Island, nothing happens. And SBF is wrapped in that same cloak, guys. He went to the right, extremely exclusive mm -hmm. high school. He went to Stanford where his parents are, are professors there. Graduate He's MIT. wrapped up in the, in the cloak of politics through his mother, who's a mm -hmm. lawyer for Clinton. Like he's wrapped up in the blanket of protection. He mm -hmm. is allowed to say, oh, I was trying to be effectively altruistic but I failed. Sorry. Versus if it was me who went to public school in a state damn college and I, I even have, you know, a, a post-grad degree. But if mm -hmm. it's me, my ass is in jail. Right. You know, I'm not blanketed in that cloak. And people keep say, seeing the same repetition of this happening over and over again. And that's part of the reason of the outrage. And that's part of the reason that people want somebody in jail now, because they know now through a pattern of the same thing happening when you're cloaked with privilege that you can just say, oh, oh, hell, what was the name? The little kid, the, the kid said that, oh, affluenza. I have affluenza. So I shouldn't go to jail where if it was you or me, our ass would be in jail. So that's part of the outrage. Part of the reason I'm pissed off. I know it is because if yeah. I do this, I'm in jail, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really frustrating. Good. Go ahead, Hammy. I was just going to continue with code bugs comment. And that's what worries us. Code bug is the fact that the tone that the politicians, like even the sec head has a relationship through relatives and, uh, with SBF and his past history. And he had an open door communication versus others. Uh, Web3 solutions like library were muzzled and so many others were muzzled. And then you have Maxine Waters like, oh, we see that you're trying and you're engaging yeah. and could you come and talk to us? And then you have the 
uh, FTC, CFTC uh, saying, oh, this this is a traditional bank run, what happened to SBA. You know, just look at the tone of the communication coming from the people that are supposed to protect us, the unknowing sheep that don't exactly. know shit, the ones that go to straight to prison. Yeah. And well, yet, you don't know better. We got to tell you how what you, you see. That's why is Maxine Waters concerned. even asking, first of all, and why are you doing it over Twitter? It's just yes. the whole thing. Well, it's, dog and like, pony show. it's right in front of our faces. Like, yes. we're really this dumb. And it's infuriating. It, it Maxine, just is. Maxine Waters is uh, uh, is part of the House Committee of Financial Services. So, so it makes that's sense why she she's ask. heading it up. But uh, doing it over Twitter is fucking bullshit. And the tone over Twitter. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, you know, it's, it's just, everything's being whitewashed. Being overly nice about it is really yes. kind of ridiculous. Yes. But, but of, that's hey, the thing, though. That goes all the way straight back to the media. And the media, long before the FTX collapse, did mm -hmm. not do their due diligence. They underwrote SBF as this altruistic hero that's going to save us all right? That's wrong. It ends up being completely wrong. And the media that reported that instead of saying, hey, look, we were wrong. Let's go back. Let's let's re-underwrite this and figure out where we were wrong and then publish it the way it is now that we have everything known that is known today. Instead yeah. of doing that and pivoting because it's the right damn thing to do now that we have more info on the table, they don't. They just continue to whitewash this guy because they didn't do their due diligence in, on the front end because he was already cloaked. He was cloaked the way he was cloaked. So they they ran with it. They, they they The media ran with it, that he's a great guy and refuses to pivot off that. And now the whitewashing's happening. Maxine Waters is, is being oh so sweet. We hope you come testify. Let me get a letter saying that I'm supposed to testify and then not show up. Right. right. What happens there? You know what I mean? Come on. Yeah. So that's the frustrating part and why the Twitter files are a big deal. Because when you suppress mm -hmm. and you can't pivot, then what the hell do we believe? Because right now I'm mad because I feel like the government or whoever the hell else is just doing blatantly dumb stuff right in front of me like I can't see it. Yep, right. And it's infuriating, right? So that that that's why Web3 is important. This is why crypto mm -hmm. is important. This is why decentral decentralization is important. You mm -hmm. have to connect the dots on what the hell does Bitcoin have to do with Maxine Waters asking SBF nicely to consider coming and sitting in front of Congress. Mm -hmm. And it has to do yeah. with it levels the playing field. Crypto decentralization levels the playing field and makes all of us immutable. It makes all of us own what we own and no one else can whitewash it for us. Correct. No one else can lawyer us out of it. No one else can show a different path of illicit activities. So that that's what it has to do. And that's why we screen, start learning about this stuff, mm -hmm. start owning it. Yeah, like, What does getting a ledger and owning your wealth have to do with you not going to jail one day because somebody doesn't want to whitewash you. They want to, they want to do the other. They, they want to, they want to throw you under the bus. Yeah. What does me having my wealth on a ledger have to do with that not happening? And the answer is everything. You just have to connect the dots. We'll throw information at you and say the same thing 80 different ways until it clicks one day. And you're like, holy shit, I get it. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because at yep. some point, it's going to affect you personally. And, All of us. Yes. Yeah. And and that that's that's the whole that's the whole point. It's like it's going to affect you personally. And so we're here to, to help people understand what to do when it does, because it's not not if it's when. Yep. yep. And and this web three is a global ledger that cannot be modified. So and it's interesting when this ex implosion or explosion happened with FTX, immediately the competing uh exchanges, because this was a, a fraud. This was not crypto, guys. We will say this yeah. till the end of our lives here. This isn't a crypto problem. It's this a, is yes, it's a person problem. Yes, and it's a fraud problem. Yeah, yeah. That crypto. Those solves yeah. the fact that it, it, they came up with a hey proof of of reserves, and now and Tam brought up a good point. Well, balance with proof of reserves also proof of liability, you know, it, where you get the whole picture, so mm -hmm. people know exactly where they're standing at. And if they would have seen, there's no Bitcoin, even though this is an exchange, people would be quickly asking, "Wait, where where the fuck is the Bitcoin?" You know, that, yeah, that's un that's unforgivable. For them to, to not have uh, solvent amounts of cryptocurrency. So if everyone was like, oh, I, I want my crypto. They're like, yeah, we don't have it. So You mm -hmm. see? Yeah. In crypto, oh, Web3, 
is the proof of the pudding, is the transparency mechanism that politics, people, and if friends can put a weave over your eyes, yes. pull a weave Agreed. through crypto, you cannot. Yep. 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 So that's it. There's this running joke that Bitcoin solves everything. You know, oh, child trafficking, yep. Bitcoin solves it. SBF, Bitcoin solves it. It's a joke, but it's not a joke. Right. Why? Because once you understand what Bitcoin stands for, why it mm -hmm. was invented, how it came mm -hmm. to be, and the amount of information and technology and advancement that has happened since that white paper came yep. out 12 years ago. Once you go down that rabbit hole, it's not conspiracy. You understand right. there's legitimacy in that. You and, can't lie. Yeah. And then, you know, fast forward 12 years since Bitcoin started, and now we can see the massive holes in so many places in our world, our society, just so many wrongdoings, you know, that happen everywhere. You understand now, well, it might not be Bitcoin itself, but you understand how the technology it's built on and where we're going in the yeah. future with with decentralized technology, how it really can solve this. And all that is called Web3. But you have to understand first how we get there. And it started with Bitcoin. That is why people call it a revolution. That is why people call it freedom. That is why people call it yours. It's a true value. But that spreads to everything in our lives, everything. And it's so mm -hmm. important that you at least understand it. Make the decision yourself to not partake in it because you researched it, you don't like it, and you don't want anything to do with it. Don't yeah. just not understand what this revolution is about because you're just choosing to be lazy about it. Because yeah. I promise you, you get a couple hours into it, you're in too because it just makes sense. Sense. Yes, it's not a left or right thing. It's an American it's not, thing. No. What I can say. It's a global thing. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah, global yeah. Thing. Right. This gets right. into yeah. natural rights. This gets into your your God given rights to life, liberty, and property is, is yeah. the, the fundamental here, right? Yeah. So it's it's natural law. But yeah, um, absolutely. Um uh I wanted to we have I have one more topic that I'm gonna actually have to pick. I had to pick between one or two. We're gonna get to the Apple topic uh, later on this week, I promise, but uh because I think that's gonna continue to unfold. It needs its own show. But uh, it does. Uh, I, I wanted to talk about the Winklevoss twins, though. Uh, the Winklevoss twins are in a, in, a, in, a, in a bit of a bit of a pickle. Uh, digital, according to Coin Telegraph and many other uh, uh, media outlets, digital asset trading from Genesis, which is uh, the parent company to Digital Currency Group, uh, owe the Winklevoss twins own crypto exchange, uh, uh, Gemini, nine hundred million dollars, and the twins want it back, according to a Financial Times report. So uh, uh, the Winklevoss twins owe $900 million and they need it from Gemini. Gemini initially partnered with uh, Genesis for the former's um, earn, earn program, which gave retail investors the opportunity to earn yield by lending their digital assets to borrowers. Uh, but Genesis found itself shortchanged when the collapse of FTX set off a crisis in the uh, crypto markets, leaving the platform without sufficient liquidity to honor Gemini's customers' redemption requests. Um, this isn't necessarily... Uh, the same as FTX, right? But it's no. still, but it's still uh, an, an issue of solvency. Um, yes. And so, how does how do the wink? First of all, the wink of all swims are going to have to figure out how to come up with a billion dollars. Essentially, probably won't be too hard for the two of them. No, it won't. But is this isn't necessarily another domino to fall. That's that's not a big domino, I would I would imagine. But um, mm -hmm. how do how do they how does this get prevented in the future? We've talked a lot about um, uh, it's over leveraging. Right. Reserves. Yeah. It's straight over leverage. I mean, the 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 reason, that, like Brad, you said it perfectly. Whether whether you know it or not, is it, it, like they they're it, it's not a bank run it, alone. OK, that's definitely part of it. It's it's not a rug pull. But these guys, like everybody else in DeFi, were over leveraged to a degree, maybe even conservatively over leveraged. Maybe it was only a part of their over leveraging. That's but what, what I was they ask. were not yeah. what they were not immune to was that they lost one point one billion dollars when three AC fell. When 3AC, 3AC, who was severely over leveraged and extremely irresponsible in what they were doing, when those guys fell, Genesis was not immune to it. They they took a $1.1 billion hit. So now you're in that hole in a bear market and also a bear market that's causing bank runs right and left. All of that put on top of each other is your black swan event. It's a perfect storm. 
right? So it's not that they necessarily did anything wrong in business terms mm -hmm. per se. They were probably conservatively over leveraged to a degree. Just, you know, it's like having a part of your portfolio that's in high risk stock. You don't want all of it there, but you want a little bit in case it pops. But if it pops the wrong way, you're not completely dead. The problem right. is the over leverage also came with a $1.1 billion uh, hit, also came with the bear market, also came with people wanting their money to, to skedaddle. Mm -hmm. So Damn. the Winklevoss, they're, they're usually the adults in the room. They've been around a very yeah. long time, but they right. are having trouble raising funds right now. It's not as easy as it should be. If it were, it wouldn't be in the news. Um, so they were actually looking for a billion dollars for a long time and now have since lowered it to 500 million. Right now they're saying, hey, look, 500 million and we'll do something with that. So they are having some issues. Um, what does it mean? I don't know. I think we're still got to go another leg down, though. Something's going to happen, whether it's with Caroline Ellison, whether it's with Genesis and, and Grayscale by default. Something else is going to happen. And Don would say, mm -hmm. you're just going to call it news. It doesn't matter the exact topic. But right. something else is coming that's going to dip us a leg lower. This mm -hmm. might be it. I want 12K for Christmas. I'm just saying. You know, yeah. some Christmas <laughs> presents. Yeah, yeah. The, que the question is simply, yeah. do you want to buy Bitcoin for Christmas presents or do you want to buy things with Bitcoin profits? Those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, th that's uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think. I'm. I'm of the mindset that I think the Winklevoss twins will be fine. And I think that they'll 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 um, they're shrewd. They'll be OK. Man. Yeah. Winklevoss. Did they over leverage? Yeah, maybe, but I don't think any more so than like a traditional bank would have leveraged. Doesn't seem weird you, to me either. Yeah, they didn't you know, go full retard like. Uh, right. Uh, right. They didn't go yeah. Chad. They didn't, you know, just. Yeah. Chad I mean, it, into listen, it. just it's, a, it's a billion dollars. Let's let's. Yeah. But it, it, I, I think just in the grand scheme of things, I, I think that it's not 16 billion for, for one, but yeah. uh, uh, I think, I think that they'll be okay. I'm not quite sure that's going to be a domino that falls. It's going to be the Winklevoss twins. I think they'll figure that out, but uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments. And, and speaking of which, if you guys want to check out our discord group, you can check us out in the, in the link in the description down below. Uh, it's absolutely free to join. You want to continue those conversations. We'd love to have you guys there. Yeah. Smash that like button and subscribe. We certainly would appreciate it. And then um, finally we got birthdays guys. I can't believe this hour this hour went by so freaking quick today. Unbelievable. Uh Walt Disney himself. It's today today's his birthday. Um he's still around because he's frozen. Oh it's yeah. It's true. Technically. He's gonna have he's gonna be reanimated <laughs> into a cyborg. <laughs> That's right. Frankie yeah. Muniz is 36. Little Richard, uh his birthday would have been today too. Rest in peace. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of birthdays today. Well, unspeakable was way at the top. That's Speak, I speak of him because my son was watching <laughs> his YouTube channel. He's big with kids nowadays. Well, there you go. He's 24, 24 years old. And then we also have the lovely Nick, Nikki Tyler, who is 50. The big 5-0. She's best known for Bubble Butts 13. Bush League. Pause. Uh, leg sex. Super suckers and fluffy comes a lot guys thanks so much for tuning in we certainly appreciate it make sure you hit the subscribe button on your way out the door and hit that thumbs up and we'll see you back here on wednesday at 9 a.m eastern time until then keep calm and hot along see you on the other side guys later see